Hi guys. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael, and I am the woodworker for MK Designs. No sewer joke this week, at least not yet, anyway. Uh, anyway, for those of you that have been following me on Facebook, uh, you know that I mentioned that my customer gave me the go-ahead to build the wine rack, and I'm going to get started on that, but before I do that, I've got a couple of things I need to do for um, in order to be able to make it. Uh, one is, I'm going to take the camera off real quick and show you this thing, if I can get the the flip around for me which I don't think I can but this is my drill press yes it's a bench top yes it's Harbor Freight I know that a lot of people have issues with Harbor Freight stuff um, quite honestly so do I for the most part um, but they have some good stuff and I, I'm gonna do a tool review video soon and that'll be one of the tools that I review and the reason I have it but and I'll go into more detail in that video of why I have it and why I use it and I'm not trying to upgrade it at the moment but what I need to do and what this video is going to be about is I need to build a rolling cart to set it on so I don't have to carry it around all the time because it's kind of heavy and I'm going to build a table a drill press table so that's what this video is about so you're getting two projects in one <laughs> you're getting the rolling cart and the drill press table so let's get to it now I know I said you're gonna get two videos in one in this but I think I've decided to separate it into two separate videos but I'll try to have them as close together as possible instead of you know a week apart and coming out the door as a sewer I knew we'd get her in there somehow so obviously the first thing I'm doing is I'm setting up my piece of plywood on styrofoam to be able to cut it down now I'm not gonna make you guys sit through me breaking down the plywood because it was like 30 minutes and yeah it's just too much for anybody to sit through but I do want to show you a couple of things I don't have a track saw and as we all know getting accurate cuts with just a circular saw can be frustrating at times so I checked into it and I went and got the Craig jig so once I get my measurements I'm gonna take and mark a longer a little bit longer line I don't I found you don't really have to mark all the way across as long as you have two lines that are exactly equal to each other then the jig works fine and you should be able to do this with a track saw too you shouldn't have to draw a line all the way across so once I have my lines marked then I'm gonna grab my Craig AccuCut and this is the one you would use to make cross cuts on the plywood and this is one of the things I wanted to show you. A lot of the complaints about this particular jig is it didn't cut accurate. And what I found is, what I'm thinking is going on anyway, is when you put the jig down for a right-handed saw, meaning the blade is on the right-hand side, you need to put the AccuCut on your piece that you're wanting to keep. That way your blade will cut on the waist side of the line just like if you were doing it on a table saw or just using a uh, circular saw freehand. But once you get the jig in place then all you do is set your saw on top of it under the guideline, into the guides and start making your cut. Another issue that I heard about was people were concerned about how it stays in place without any clamps or anything. It works just like a track saw. It has a rubber bottom on it that actually with the weight of the saw, it doesn't move. I have not had this thing move on me at all. But once you get it set up and you make a few cuts with it and you get used to it, it actually works very, very well as long as you have everything aligned correctly and your saw is calibrated properly. Now the companion to the rip cut or to the accu cut is the Craig rip cut and that's what this piece is you see in front of you. The piece that you attach to the bottom of your saw actually works with both. You do not have to interchange it at all. As a matter of fact it even has two separate guides on it. One's for the accu cut and one is for the rip cut and they both work really well once you get used to them. The only problem that I have with the rip cut is it will only cut up to 24 inches and a lot of times we all know that you need to cut a little bit wider than that and the AccuCut won't reach all the way across a full sheet of plywood. 
lengthwise. The solution I found is if you're having to make a cut wider than 24 inches but narrower than 48, you just flip it and cut the short piece off and it works just fine. Sorry about the bad camera angle here. My camera got tilted and I didn't know it until I was completely done ripping down the plywood. So one more thing about this piece of plywood that I'm using. It's called Craftsman Birch and I can get it from my local hardwood supplier. Um, you could probably use get away with using a decent piece of the maple plywood or something on those lines from one of the big box stores. Okay, so once I have all my plywood cut down to rough size, I'm going to take the two pieces for my top tabletop and I'm going to laminate them together. So I'm going to spread on a generous amount of glue and spread it on. Now I'm sure some of you have seen um, some other people use this, including Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer. This is called an ink brayer, and it actually works really well to spray glue on large surfaces like this. Now at this point I'm starting to realize that maybe I was a little too generous with the amount of glue that I used. Maybe just a little bit. So once I have all my glue spread out evenly, I'm going to take my second piece and put it on top. And then I'm going to just kind of rub the two pieces together a little bit, wiggle the top one around just to get the glue to start it here. And I'm already getting glue squeeze out. So I'll just take a wet rag and wipe up what I can before I start putting my clamps on because there's going to be more to clean up after the clamps are on. And it's at this point I realized that I probably should have used my silicone mats underneath this just to help protect my work table. So once I have the bulk of the squeeze out cleaned up, I'll start clamping it. I'll start on my four corners and then put clamps in between. And yeah, you never have enough clamps. So once I have all the clamps on the outside, I'm going to take a piece of scrap plywood and set in the middle and then I'm going to set my drill press on top of it because it's the heaviest thing I have at the moment that's not already bolted down to something else just to act as a clamp for the center. Okay, so a couple weeks ago I told you guys that I had a video on how I cut longer boards down safely on my table saw since I don't have a miter saw that I can actually trust at the moment. and so I'm going, to try, I'm going to go ahead and do that now since I've got these longer boards I need to cut down. I need to cut my legs from my cart. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so my legs need to be 31 inches long. And I'm going to laminate two of these 2x4s together at 31 inches. Or, yeah, I'm going to laminate two 2x4s two together to uh, get my legs. And I need a total of four, which means I need eight of these. I, can, I should be able to get three of them out of one two by four by eight so I need three of them because I need the third one to get the last two so what I do I always want to cut off this end so I'm gonna add a little bit extra to my first cut my first mark so I'm going at 31 inches I normally go a quarter inch because that way I can make sure everything's flush and square but I'm gonna go an extra quarter inch just for that end right there so I'm gonna mark this one at 31 and a half Okay, and that's my first board, my first leg. So the next cut is going to be another 31 inches. So from 31 and a half plus 31, that's 62 and a half. And I'm going to add a quarter inch to that. So that'll be at 62 and three quarters. And then from there, I add another 31 inches. And I'm currently going to go off camera here. So 62 and 3 quarters plus 31 is 92 and 3 quarters plus a quarter is 93. So I'm going to mark that at 93. Now, this first line and that last line are not where I'm going to cut. What I'm going to do so I don't waste a whole lot of material is I'm only going to mark for the middle one usually <laughs> in this case 
I'm probably going to mark for the first one. So that is going to be where I'm going to make my first cut. So the second line, my second mark and the third mark are not where I'm going to make my cuts. But my first mark is. Because normally what I try and do is I try and go in the middle, as close to the middle of the board as possible. And I will cut that mark first. And then I will switch everything around, get everything marked to the length that I'm wanting, and cut it down from there. So I'm going to get the rest of these marked up, and then we'll move over to the table saw, and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so one thing I didn't show you guys over there when I was marking everything is a lot of times I'll mark the face of the board as well as the edge, and that helps me get my blade lined up with my mark. So what I'm going to do, that's part of the reason why I like to use a marking knife. I don't use it all the time, but I use it for a lot of different things. So what I'll do is I'll take the knife and I'll put it right on my line on the face because these have these curved edges so it's a little hard to get the lines to match up. And I'll put it right on my line and I'll mark it like that. And then that makes it easier to come back. Hi Matthew. And put my pencil on where the cut is from the knife and draw the line on the edge. And that makes it a whole lot easier to line it up here. So what I do is like I said, I try to cut as close to the middle of the board as possible. And so I'll pick, I'll pick the line that I'm going to cut and I will line my blade up with it. And as you can see on my crosscut sled, I have a lot more surface area over here to be able to support the board than I do on this side. And even at this short of board, when I cut this off, it's going to want to pop up. So I can support it over here with my hand, and if not, I can go get another one of these clamps and do the same thing on this side. Or I can support it on this side and put the clamp over here. Because I have the longer piece over here, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to move the clamp over and support this side. So what, I'm, what I do... I get my clamp in here and line it up, get everything tight. And that holds it down. And I can get it so tight that it will not move at all. So I'm going to get my dust mask and my safety glasses and I'm going to make the cut. Once I cut the first one cut, then I will make the exact same cut on the other two boards. So once I have those initial cuts made, then I will go back and I will measure and add a quarter inch to my final length. And I'll get my fence set up and I'll get the rest of my pieces cut to size. So once I have them all cut to rough length, I'm going to glue them and laminate them together. And for those of you that follow Steve Ramsey, you may notice that the frame for this cart, I'm actually doing it the same way that he did uh, for his basic mobile workbench, his BMW. I actually designed this, modeled it after his design. Um, I'll put a link to his video in the description and if I can figure it out I'll also put it up in the cards and if I do figure it out it should be popping up in the top right hand corner of your screen right about now. So once I have the glue on I'm going to press them together just like I did with the top and put a couple of clamps on them and run about four screws in. Now when I go to put the screws in, I'm going to leave about four inches or so, four and a half, four or four and a half inches from the top and the bottom. That's to allow for my frame pieces so that they don't, the screws don't hit each other.
And once I have the first one done, I'm just going to repeat it for the other three. And just like that, we have four legs and an homage to everyone's favorite photo bomber. So I set my legs to the side and I get ready to start cutting my frame pieces, my top and bottom frame pieces. I need four short ones and four long ones. So I'm going to make the same first cut in the middle of the board as I did before. And then I'm going to mark and I'm going to make cut these to exact length. I'm going to mark them and then I'm going to cut them. Next, because I like to have clean edges, I'm going to cut one edge off of the legs and the top and bottom frame pieces. And then I'm going to flip them over and cut them all to three inches wide. Now on the legs, if you're not comfortable making this cut in one pass with the blade raised this high, then don't. You can easily raise your blade a little more than halfway through and run them one way, one time, then flip it over and run it the other way and you get the same cut. So once I have them all ripped down to three inches wide, then I will take my legs and my crosscut sled and cut them down to exact length. Once I have all that done, then I'll start putting my frame together. <clears throat> the important thing here is to remember to keep everything square. Um, otherwise, everything's going to be off. But just get everything square, screw it down with screws, and you're good to go. And again, Steve Ramsey goes over more detail about how to <clears throat> put all this together in his video on the BMW. And now we have our frame. And now it's the next day. And I'm going to measure for my base and my back. Once I have the measurements, I will get them cut. So once I have them cut to size, I need to cut out the corners of my base pieces so that it'll go, they'll go around my legs. I'm going to just do that with a jigsaw. I could easily do it with a bandsaw, but to save a little bit of time, I just pulled out the jigsaw and did it with it. Once I have the corners cut out, then I'll get the bottom pieces put in place.
And then it's just a matter of pre-drilling and driving some screws to hold them down. I'll do this all the way around the bottom. Next I'll attach my back panel and I'll just pre-drill and drive a screw into each of the four corners. That should be more than enough to hold it. Now I'm measuring for my side pieces from, for the opening for my drawer so that I have something to attach my slides to. Now's as good a time as any to attack, flip the thing over and attach the casters. Now I'll get the excess glue from my top scraped off and get it cut down to size. And the way I do that is I cut a little bit off of two sides to get rid of the glue lines. And then I take my measurements and put that edge against my fence and cut everything down to size. Now I'm going to take measurements for my drawer box. So I'm going to measure my opening across the face, that'll be the width, then I'll measure the height, and then I'll measure the depth. Now once you have your opening measurements, you, you're going to take those measurements and on your width and your depth, you're going to subtract one inch. On your height, you're going to subtract three quarters of an inch. There are two reasons for that. The three quarters of an inch is number one, if you have a whole measurement such as six inches in, or seven inches, which is my case, uh, because I'm doing dovetails, dovetails tend to look a little bit better when you use a whole inch plus a quarter. So that would make my height of my drawer box to be six and a quarter inches. And it also gives a little bit of space for it to slide back and forth on both the top and the bottom and the inch on the two sides it, on the width is to allow for half an inch on either side for your drawer slides and from the on the back or for the depth it's to allow for a little bit of play in the back end so that you can get your drawer in there just right so of course the next step will be to rip down my drawer pieces then cross cut them to length So once I have them all cut, I'm going to bring them over and get them all marked to, in order to use in the jig. And once I get my dovetail jig set up, then I'll get them in there and I'll get started cutting the dovetails. I'm not going to go into detail about how to set this thing up uh, because James King has two really good videos. One for half blind dovetails and one for through dovetails on how to set this, this exact jig up. And he does a much better job of explaining it than I could ever do. But what I am going to explain is what I'm doing right now is yes, I'm making a climb cut because when you're making dovetails in plywood, even Baltic birch, they, it tends to tear out. Do, doing a climb cut across it first, then going in and plunging into your dovetails helps reduce that. That combined with having a good router, having a sharp bit, and just taking your time and being slow. So once I get all my dovetails cut for this one, I'll test fit it, and if everything looks good, and it's not too tight or too loose, then I'll cut the other three corners. If it is too tight or too loose, then I'll adjust and cut it again and try again. And I'll keep doing that until they fit perfectly, and then I'll cut the other three corners. I'm just wondering how many people can spot the mistake here. I'll leave this up here for just a second. So basically on the two boards on the left, 
I put them in on one corner backwards and didn't realize it until right about now. I'm realizing it, but I'm just checking to see if everything else is lined up. Now, normally this wouldn't, you, you would think this wouldn't be a problem, but it actually is because you'll get this whole thing together and then you'll find out that three of your corners come to a perfect square. The last one, the one that you messed up on, doesn't. So I had to go back and recut those two boards and do it again. So once I get my pieces cut again, I'll get everything put back together, make sure everything's square, and then I'm going to measure for my bottom. I'm going to take my measurement and subtract three quarters of an inch because that'll give me three eighths of an inch on either side. Then I'm going to put my dado stack in my table saw and get everything set up for that. Next, I'm going to set my height to 3 eighths of an inch. Then I'm going to move my fence over and set it to a quarter inch. That way it will give me a quarter inch lip on the bottom. Once I have all that set, then I'm going to start cutting my dado and check make sure it fits. And when it does, I'm going to cut the other three pieces, making sure I'm lining up everything the correct way. Okay, so I completely forgot to hit record on the glue up, so I'm going to let it dry overnight and then I'm going to sand it down to get rid of the sharp edges so you don't get any nasty splinters from it. Now it's time to install the drawer slides. So I'm going to get my line marked where I want them at and I'm going to set them in place and I'm going to use a VIX bit, that's V-I-X, to make sure I drill a center hole and I'm going to run a screw and then I'm going to go through and make sure it lines up square and straight and get the rest of the screws put in. Once I have both sides done, then I'm going to take a quarter inch shim and put it in there so that I have a little bit of space on my drawer. Now, in my case, my drawer wound up being a little bit tight and I went back and measured and sure enough, it was a little bit too big, about a sixteenth of an inch. So I just pushed it back and forth in and out a couple of times and to get it marked where I needed to sand, I took my sander and sanded it down on both sides until it fit smooth. Once I got that fixed, then I pulled out and made sure my slides were flush with the front, then cl clamped them in place and drilled a pilot hole and drilled my screws. I did that on both sides and I pulled it out and worked my way down on both sides. And as you can see, it works like a charm. I'm using a slow close 100 pound hinge by High Point. Next, I measured for my face plate and got it cut on the table saw. So apparently I also forgot to record putting the face plate on. So I'm going to put the drawer pull on. I'm using a 220 millimeter pull and the screw holes are 160 millimeters apart. So I'm going to measure for where I want to put my holes and pre-drill and attach my handle. Now I can start attaching my top. So I'm going to get it as close to centered as possible on the cart and then I'm going to drive four screws into either corner and that'll be that. The next thing I'm going to do, I decided to put a chamfer around the tabletop just to help keep it from splintering and get rid of the sharp edges. I did this on the drawer front as well, but I figured I only really need to show you guys this once and this is a better camera angle. Took my random orbit sander and just got rid of the rest of the sharp edges. Now the last thing I have to do is I have to get the drill press on, mounted onto the cart. So I'm going to get it centered as possible, then I'm going to drill four holes run four bolts through it, attach the nuts, 
and get everything attached with a ratchet and a wrench. Some of the bolts need a little more convincing to go in. Okay, so I know I told you guys that um, you were going to get both videos in this one, but I didn't realize how long it was going to actually take to build the cart. And how long the video is going to be I mean, there's a lot of information to cover in that and with this video being around 30 minutes long i'm not sure exactly how long it's going to be just yet but it's going to be around 30 minutes um, i decided to break it up into two so i'm going to do the cart in this one and then the next video will be the drill press table you can see i've already gotten started on it i've got my table right here clamped up and the fence right here clamped up so <laughs> i've already gotten started on it but another thing i wanted to show you guys this view all right this is our spring and fall sunset it the way the sun hits the back of the mountains and the clouds it lights up through here like it's magical i mean <laughs> it, it really is but this is what i work with this is where i work and i love it so yeah uh the next video will definitely be the router uh, drill press table <laughs> And after that, we will get started on the wine rack. So until next time, happy creating.